good morning and welcome back to the last session of the online lecture series for degree students organized by department of english kk college jammu and youtube channel english literature tips today i have come in front of you not as the usual moderator of the session rather today i will take part in the role of the speaker of the next one hour so before i begin with my talk let me introduce myself i am dr anita sundar pulle and i teach literature at ikem college chamoi that's all for my introduction i guess before i start my talk let me share few things regarding this lecture series the sole purpose of this series was to the get the benefit of the degree students who could not visit their colleges or universities during this difficult time so we have observed from various social networking sites like facebook youtube that though there are abundance specialized contents in form of webinar e conference uh, faculty development program etc there are hardly anything available for the common students so in order to help those students not only in terms of understanding the topic or the subject matter in a very lucid manner i say but also preparing them for the upcoming examinations we have organized this lecture series i am grateful to all the 17 speakers who have kindly consented and presented for the series and i want to take this opportunity to thank them not only on behalf of the department and on behalf of the youtube channel news literature tips but also from the students your contributions are truly exceptional thank you thank you so much now uh, let me go back to my topic the topic of my today's talk is pride and prejudice as a social novel the novel which i have chosen for today's talk needs no introduction to the literature lovers it is taught and studied all over the world and is very pertinent for both ba and pg students as well as for the research students so though i have titled my talk as pride and prejudice as a social novel i want to touch all the important aspects related to the novel at the very beginning let me walk you through the outline of my today's talk in my lecture today i want to cover broadly three important aspects the first part i would like to talk about uh, the historical backdrop of austin writing jane austen writing uh, in this particular segment i would like to talk about the setting of the chaotic history of europe in 18th century apart from that i will also try to examine how jane austen belongs to both 18th as well as in the 19th century not only in terms of age but also in terms of the quality or the content of his write of her writing so also i will attempt to study jane austen as a novelist and also i will look for uh, autobiographical substance in her novels the second part of my talk i will devote myself to investigate jane austen's contemporary time and also the social structure here we will study all the public com complexity through reading the various forms of pride uh, form of prejudice the various forms of love money then there is marriage etc and by the reading of all the novels together especially pride and prejudice and in the last part of my discussion i will discuss about uh, women's state of affairs in austin's contemporary society in this particular part we will try to study various social stigmas and laws which were involved in the repression of women here i will try to find out many examples from pride and prejudice and also from jane austen's uh, life to rationalize my case i will talk about how austen in her book showcases women and how she has had to suffer as a female writer in such a society we will also have a kind of thorough reading of austen's heroines especially elizabeth bennet from pride and prejudice and the other heroines like Catherine Morland from Northanger Abbey, 
uh, Ann Miller from Sense and Sensibilities or Emma Woodhouse from Emma. So, in this analysis, we will also study how Austin's heroines are different from the conventional realist heroines of our time. So, I will conclude my lecture by mentioning, uh, it is also meant for the students, I will mention all the important questions related to the novel and also we will talk about how students should attend the questions in the exams. Okay then, let us start. So, 18th century was difficult time in European history, especially before World War. This was a time of social turbulence and evidently there are noticeable changes in socio-political perceptions. The changes could be seen in diverse social happenings such as farmers moving from countryside estates to cities. As an alternative of agriculture, there was a continuing reallocation among people to do business. People are actually moving from farming to business. Then Europeans in general and British citizens in particular got in touch with other cultures. How? Through the uh, advanced, through the advancement of colonialism and imperialism. As we all know, it was a time when British ruled almost half of the world. So, simultaneously, there are uprising occurrence in almost all part of the Europe and most significant example of such revolution was French Revolution, which though happened in Paris, had its shock, had its impact all over the Europe. So, this was also the time when the situation of British Island, I mean, I include all the countries in British Island, Ireland, England, then Scotland, everyone was also very disturbing. In actuality, it was actually a very fierce time in English history since the time of the civil war. Civil war means I meant the what will happen before restoration. The civil war uh, between the monarchy and the common people. So there was dominations of civil rights. So this type of chaos occurred as some kind of excessive affluence and scarcity remain side by side. I mean, the rich and poor, they remain side by side. So, there, some, uh, there happened to be some kind of tussle. So, there were high death rate among the civilians and the development of industrialization made the life of the common people upside down. It has changed completely. This effectively gives rise to the surfacing of new capitals. So, industrialization gives rise to new capitalism. So, these progressions brought numerous social changes. The society has changed, a, uh, has undergone a drastic change. So, such happening started inquiring the very concept of society. I mean, there are so many social changes because of this kind of uh, uprising and other things. And all these things started reflecting in genocide works. So, this all changes was very much responsible to bring the romantic movement. As we are aware, the romantic movement started being influential during late 18th century and also in the 19th century. So, according to this movement, nature is measured as a place where people could actually escape from the hustle bustle of regular life. So, there is some problem in our society, there is some problem in our life. We could go away from those problems by going to the nature. Just like uh, we go to Himalayas, we go to Darjeeling, we go to Shimla, we go to visit, uh, we go to Goa to move away from the hustle bustle of the society for, for some days. And it was kind of uh, gradual escape towards nature. So, According to this movement, nature is measured as a place where people can actually move out. In fact, romanticism distanced nature from the civilization. So, one of the most important aspects of romanticism is the inclination to dispense one's personal expression as well as experience over the collective. So, what is happening in the society? I don't have much uh, interest in that. I should concentrate upon my own good being. I should move away to the nature. So, there is always a powerful stress on the subjectivity 
and impulsive appearances. Now, if you connect Jane Austen with romantic movement, there are some partisan observations come to the fore. There is one famous Austen critic named Minakshi Mukherjee, who observes Jane Austen's main offerings as the additional of the cell, which has so far been all male, including women. So, till now, there was the mention of the male dominancy. Okay. So, strikingly, it can be seen that in Austin, he was very much unconcerned towards nature. He was very much, he was very much indifferent towards nature. Her works instead reflected uh, the life of upper and middle class society during his contemporary current time. Though her writing career were in, existed in 19th century, because most of his novels was published uh, in 19th century, written in 19th century. Her novels are usually read as part of the 18th century convention of rational and cool sense. So the thing is like, though he was, she was writing during 19th century, the tone of his of her writing, the content of her writing was not much matched with the romantic content. Instead of that, he was actually following the convention of the 18th century, which is against the spirit of romantic movement. So, Jane Austen also depicted lack of realism in her writings. So, if you study her novels narrowly, you would observe that she distrusted emotional eff effusiveness in her writings. So, all these qualities altogether showcase Austen as the result of transitional period between the both the centuries, both 18th centuries and the 19th century. Her characters are drawn from the middle east, middle class society, and thus her novels demonstrate the traits of 18th century. And side by side, her treatment of characters, the unique traits of protagonist and the plot makes her a kind of 19th century novels. So we can safely conclude that Jane Austen belongs to both 18th and 19th century. In fact, she was kind of trans tra transitional writer. Now. If you study English realist novels written by Samuel Richardson or Henry Fielding, you could find that those novels illustrate the challenging nature of relationship between man and society. Ian Watt, in his book, The Rise of the Novel, rightly pointed out that the novelty of these novels was novels written by uh, Richardson and Fielding. These are a part of formal realism. That is, the idea of the novel is full of genuine description and of human practice. In other words, they always try to poise individual side and his or her obligation towards the case. You can see that this is somewhat dissimilar from, say, Richardson of Finley's writings. Though, she tried to find out the difference between the idealistic ambition of the person and the materialism of the society. She didn't try to follow the techniques of the writers like Richardson and Finley, as I have already mentioned. So, what she has done, she has an, as an alternative, she investigated comic resolution to those conflicts. And uh, Pride and Prejudice is a supreme example of that kind of resolution. So, let us move to Austin's novel for a detailed study. So, the first aspect which we are going to study here is the autobiographical nature of her novel. Jane Austen was the second daughter of her parents. Her parents had eight children. So, if you study uh, Pride and Prejudice, you can see her protagonist Elizabeth Bennet was also the second uh, daughter. And she was smart and uh, Jane Austen also grew up together with the students of her father and school. We can have this kind of autobiographical uh, impact uh, from Catherine Morland's life, uh, the heroine of North Angeles Abbey. Then she has that kind of boarding school experience and which has been depicted in Emma Woodhouse's life in the novel Emma. So if you study all the novels, you can see there are plenty of 
autobiographical elements in her novels. So Jane Austen, as a familiar novelist, depicted all the characters which she herself experienced in her real life. She enjoyed the social life, she enjoyed the balls, she enjoyed the parties, she was very much fond of dancing, and you can notice that all these aspects are available in all her works. And I must say here that she was highly influenced by Fanny Burney's book. In fact, the title Pride and Prejudice, the title Pride and Prejudice of this novel was taken from Burney's novel Sicilia. So the influence of Sicilia, uh, influence of Fanny Burney was very much depicted in her uh, writings. So Austin wrote six novels which took her 26 years. She took 26 years for her six novels and all of us are known that her novels are North Angel Ave, Sense and Sensibility, which I have already mentioned. There is Pride and Prejudice, there is Manship, Man Manfield's Spur, there is Emma, and the last novel was Persuasion. So, let us move to the other pertinent aspects related to the novel Pride and Prejudice. First and foremost, let us understand the concept of pride because we have to understand the title first. No? So, pride is presented as a very common quality of human life. Pride is available in everyone. Many people take pride in many things. Okay. So, these kind of prides can be understood only through interpretation. So, pride can be comparable with the passions like love. It's a kind of human quality. However, the object of pride is only alone. It's connected to the self alone. So, pride is some kind of extreme self-regard or kind of self-respect. It can also be seen as something which is enjoyable to the person. I mean, suppose I, I possess an Apple iPhone and I, I take pride of that. Okay. So, oh, with the possession of the iPhone, Apple iPhone, I take pride that I am the owner of the iPhone. Okay. So, uh, I take the pride because of that possession itself. So, it can be anything, it can be intellectual position, it can be some material position, like that means an iPhone. So, these attributes related to pride are clearly visible in this particular novel, Pride and Prejudice. Here, the two words you have to understand, pride and prejudice, what is the indication of the taste, cheap concept. What is the cheap concept here? Here, are the two independent identities exist separately. Pride and prejudice exist separately in personality and behavior of different characters. So, in our classroom we are taught that in this novel Darcy embodies pride and Elizabeth embodies prejudice. That's all. But actually it goes beyond that. The concept of prejudice can be seen as a result of pride, as an effect of pride which is reflected in the attitudes and behavior of all the person who represent the pride and who actually reacts against those pride. So, pride can be seen in various other forms as well. Pride also shows is in various weaknesses such as it can be found in the arrogance as exhibited by her wealth in the character of Lady Catherine de Bourgh. It can be the foolishness Pride can be presented as, as the foolishness as exemplified by our Mrs. Bennett and because she, like, her lifelong goal was to search for rich sons in love. So it can be also seen in the form of egotism as reflected in the character of say uh, Caroline Bingley, the younger sister of Bingley because she thought she had some kind of uh, high economic background and she, she had some kind of cultural superiority. So, this kind of egotism can be interpreted as pride. It can also be found in form of weirdness as depicted by Mr. Collins, who changes her uh, so-called love interest in like regular clothes. Actually, she proposed, uh, she thought of proposing Jane Bennett and she proposed Elizabeth Bennett 
and when she rejected her proposal his proposal she uh, he turned into charlotte bingley so it's some kind of very funny thing pride can also be seen the sense of playfulness as described in lydia who fails to recognize the cost of her own action which actually makes her in, insensible to the pain and sufferings she causes to other person connected to her. so it is another aspect of pride which can be uh, interpreted as vanity so if pride relates more to our opinion on ourselves then vanity is something which would which, which would have others think of us for example darcy darcy's self esteem can be understood as proud pride because uh, that is to be understood by someone else why george we can self regard can be seen as vanity so if we study the novel closely we can also see there are uh, many form of selfishness also in form of pride but people's approach to each other depends on the gain uh, they can obtain from them this is based exact exhibited in the case of uh, george wickham and mrs pen george wickham selflessly take advantage of the goodness of other people his economic gain and mrs bennet she always gives extreme importance to petty convenience she can hastily forget that her youngest daughter which is lydia who loved and showcases her own worthless son is not so we can marry lydia because of the money provided by ders but as soon as lydia got married with him uh, mrs bennet actually uh, tries to give importance to him so she easily forgets the elopement and she shows her some kind of panic okay so pride can also be understood in form of say self centeredness which can be found in mr collins which i have already mentioned and in form of silliness in, in case of william lucas who actually leaves his family occupation and joins straight in order to ascend the social ladder so in this novel only two characters darcy and elizabeth they carry the positive aspect of self respect which somewhat metamorphoses for good the course of the novel now it is also important to learn a little about the term first impression and how far first impression be the last impression we talk about lovers love at first sight so i don't think the first impression always carry towards the last impression and in this particular novel we have several examples of that as we all know first impression was the initial title of the first draft of the novel right actually uh, actually jane austen has given this title first impression while he was she was writing the first draft of the novel. so this is important because this is the first impression which saves the development of the novel so it is the first mistakes committed by intelligent and observant people like darcy and elizabeth in the meritan world both of them were intelligent but both of them had made some kind of mistake on one side we have darcy who offends the ladies of the ball because of his prejudice even he comments elizabeth elizabeth is tolerable enough tolerable but she is not handsome enough to tempt him to dance with and unfortunately elizabeth over over years this and, and later on hurt her vanity distort her judgment of the characters of darcy as well as the character of micha so this creates the root of the interconnectivity between pride as well as the prejudice so it is the breakdown of first impression it structures the entire novel now let us understand another very important feature portrayed in this novel that is the marriage here 
marriage can be analyzed in three levels in terms of external obstacles like uh, patriarchy and the property relation and secondly in terms of characters personal attribute like pride which has to be overcome by the process of self education which happened in case of elizabeth ben jenostin here pointed out the role of property and economic gain in neo middle classes treatment of marriage it is the doubt and disregard for the women and the view of women in the eyes of society as mere object of pleasure here we have the examples of mr collins come back collins again and again collins proposal to jane then busy and later charlotte is kind of serious failure of the society of genost so here marriage can also be understood as the simplest route to instant prosperity charlotte lucas thought she is getting old she is already 26 and think it is highly marriageable and after this she will not get married to anyone so her marriage to lucas can be a mode can be understood as a mode of social mobility for her or we can development with media where we can has actually used media to get the money or the financial assistance provided by others even how seriously are we take elizabeth's assertion that the site of magnificence and massive pemberley estate uh, changed her mind to us does you don't know it was never been discussed in the novel and we better ignore it but there is some kind of thought for our uh, thinking process so this is something which provides serious food for thought uh, that i must say so on the other hand we have mrs bennet who considers her daughters as some perishable commodities this life a ripe banana it will uh, it will perish in course of time if they are not disposed in the form of marriage so mr collins's arrogance to marry elizabeth lady catherine's dullness towards elizabeth also signifies this kind of societal attitude however the union of say darcy and lizzy and later jane and bingley at the end emphasizes the individual independence and critical intelligence and the candor and good will respectively they in fact represent some good marriage and the difficulties in the union of both the pairs exemplify the best possible scenario available within the limitations of the existing social order and i must say that was the target of jane austen in writing this novel so another aspect which is also of mention is like uh, how marriage can be involved in communication not for just women but also for men so just like opportunist shardot took us who grab the opportunity of mr collins with both hands the character we can also displays which i already mentioned the nature of a kind of old hunter or old digger or fortune hunter he initially tried to love with georgiana darcy to get her fortune the uh, sister of darcy and later settled with lydia for the same reason so the conventional ending of the novel with happy marriages where women uh, reach their desired goal of their life also talks about austen indications of women's role in the society now let me talk a little about the final part of my lecture the understanding of women's position in austen's contemporary period there is a famous book called vindication to the rights of women written by mary wollstone Wood, craft in 1797 which is considered as one of the earliest revolutionary feminist work in that particular book she has shows a displeasure of women position in the society they are not allowed 
in the intellectual and any kind of political life. They were bred for marriage, they are bred for child bearing, and there are several laws that restricted women's right to own property. We have an example in the novel where the law of entail and inheritance, where the distant male relative will get the property after Mr. Banner's death. In this case, we have Mr. Collins, who will eventually inherit Mr. Banner's property as a distant male relative after his death, despite he had five daughters. He had a full family. Despite that, it was Mr. Collins who was supposed to get the property of Banner's. So, you can see the laws were against women that time. Women were also bare, barren to gain knowledge on classical language. Okay. Because there was a famous saying in Bengali, Era Joto Beshi Jane, Toto Kom Mane. The more they study, the less they obey. So there are certain bar uh, in kind of in terms of understanding the classical language. In a letter to his niece, Cassandra Austin, in Austin wrote, I quote, a middle class woman who was dependent upon her family or her husband and hard time forced some to become governess, but there was little on offer. So we can see either a middle class woman can become dependent on her family or they can become a governess or they can become a teacher, a tailor. That is all the occupations which were available for the women during that time. So here let us put some examples from Austin works to justify this claim. First example which comes to my mind is Lady Bertram from the novel Mansfield Park. Here she is engaged in a kind of never ending purposeless carpet work. She has nothing else to do. So this is the job for women and she is actually doing that. Another example can be from the Mary. I mean Mary in Pride and Prejudice. Since she is, short, she is not beautiful like uh, her elder sisters, Jane and Elizabeth. So she is forced to learn music lessons to become noticeable in the society. But I mean he, she has to hide her physical beauty in order to show uh, some qualities like learning music and and thirdly women's activities noted by Bingley in the Meriden world that is also interesting she pointed, he pointed out uh, in his conversation with us that what those those women do they paint stable they cover spins they made spurs they sing they dance they draw as if as if there is nothing significant to contribute from the perspective of the women in the society dominated by men. So, this is very important. And it is another aspect which, which is worth mentioning. Like the dealing of women, the issue of settlement. So, settlement is something which is a kind of fixed premarital, premarital legal document. Uh, and it used to ensure the property which a woman brings to the marriage. Because of that thing, Mr. Bennett has to pay Lydia's share despite her elopement with him. We have refused to marry Lydia without a settlement which was lastly paid by Darcy, which I have already mentioned. So, this law of settlement serves two things. Firstly, it highlights the economic base of most marriages and secondly it functions as an index to character and in this case reveals we can to motive of economic greed. Another uh, important aspect in this context is the struggle of women writers. Anne Elliot, Jane Austen's heroine in Persuasion, novel Persuasion, he remarks uh, that men had 
every advantage of us in telling this story. The pain has been in their hands. So, in, uh, Anne Elliot has uh, complained actually that it's the men who are, have the who have everything in their control, even the writing. So, being a writer during that period was next to impossible to think of. And even if someone becomes a uh, writer like Jane Austen, it is subject to severe, uh, subject to face severe criticism during that time. There is a famous critic called Anthony Burgess who dislikes Jane Austen like anything. So, he pointed out that Jane Austen's writings lacks, I, I comment, Jane Austen's writings lacks a strong male trust, a brutal intellectual content. So you can understand from the comments like how the women writers during that time was seen, was viewed in the light of the patriarchal society. So women in the society are expected to be some kind of fragile, they are expected to be powerless and they are expected to be unaware of any kind of intellectual activity. So these are so called culturally contingent norms of that time. We have Austin's heroines like Elizabeth Bennet, who I agree she had certain imperfections, but she can be viewed as an example of kind of rebellious person to those social norms which I have already mentioned. She is one on one hand witty, she is independent, she is courageous, she was courageous enough to admit her mistakes. There are certain generalized features, the other, other, other heroines of Jane Austen like Emma Woodhouse, or uh, Catherine Morland, I have already mentioned her. There is Anne Elliot and Fan Price. All these Austin heroines, they bear some kind of this rebel nature presented by Elizabeth Bennet in this particular novel. I mean, rebel in not that sense, keep going everything against the society. But rebel in that sense that those characters are put some kind of individuality in their characterization, some kind of protest on their part to the limited span where what Jane Austen has achieved in her novels. Okay, so we have studied enough about Elizabeth Bennet. I am quite sure your teacher has taught you about Elizabeth Bennet and his character in your classroom. So I am not going to discuss anything about the obvious I will point out two, three aspects which makes Sir a little different in the context of the society he belongs. First point which comes to my mind is Elizabeth Bennett's refusal to Collins. Elizabeth considers herself a rational creature instead of some kind of uh, elegant female. So she readily act, rejects Collins' comic marriage proposal. Comic actually proposes uh, Elizabeth twice. And Elizabeth thought it was some kind of comic thing and she finds no rational reason to accept it. And secondly, when Jane became ill at Bingley's place, Elizabeth, without thinking of any kind of social outlook, societal outlook of some young lady who was traveling alone in a March train petticoat to change her system. It actually reveals her affectionate nature to her sister, which she places over the social conventions. Thirdly, as a round character, she let her evolve in the passing time. That is very important. She has the courage to accept her mistakes. And this particular property, I like Celia Bennett very much. She had the courage to accept her mistakes and also has the guts to undo all the wrongdoings and thoughts towards others. That is very important for some kind of wrong characters. Fourthly, 
she was mentally very strong and she had the courage to face the confrontations by lady catherine which other minor characters like uh, say collins or mrs bennet they not even think of she let her characters like collins or mr bennet they they are actually so afraid of lady catherine they they could not even stand in front of her. so what elizabeth has done she had actually let her intellectual strength to prosper in front of lady catherine and other bingley sisters and with it overcomes the socio economic shortcomings of her lower middle class position this entire instances make elizabeth bennet more balanced more unique more some kind of human so let us sum up my lecture today i have talked about the contemporary history of jane austen i have pointed out the un unseen forces which propelled jane austen to move away from romantic women i have mentioned other realist novelists and how jane austen both associated and disassociated them her from such tradition i have also mentioned uh, some very important aspects related to the novel pride and prejudice i have talked about money i have talked about marriage i have talked about pride and prejudice i have talked about uh, women's position in the society i have talked about the problems of women writers and most importantly i have talked about austin's approach to such problems now let us as i have already promised let us spend some time related to the important questions related to the examination there are many questions that uh, that could be asked from pride and prejudice for example the topic which i have discussed today pride and prejudice as a social novel or pride and prejudice as a novel as a comedy of manner in that particular uh, answer we have to write the things which i have already discussed we have to talk about everything about the society about the women's so the situation of the women characters we have to talk about the money marriage everything okay another question may come how the concept of money and marriage has been depicted in the novel that is also very important i mean uh, you have to analyze the question from the perspective of all the characters not only for all the uh, bennet sisters but also for the perspective of the pinleys and the sees or the perspective of catherine de bourg from the perspective of collins from the perspective of lucas charlotte lucas so you have to deal with that question like that another question may come from this uh, particular novel is how female characters are depicted in the novel here while answering answering this kind of question you have to think about uh, certain characters in categorically you have to divide them you have to talk about the good female characters you have to talk about the conventional female characters you have to talk about, talk about Uh, all the pompous, all the caricature characters like Lady Catherine de Bourgh, and we have to separately deal with, and along with that, we have to talk about their problems, the problems in the money, the problems in marriage, the problem in the social security, all these things, the problem with the entailment. Then another question is very pertinent in this discussion, that is the justification of the title, and you may be asked that. Uh, comment on the earlier title, uh, first impression. How those things can be understood? First impression of the novel. How first impression is different from the uh, last impression? So in that particular aspect, we have to talk about the uh, the title which was earlier given by Jane Austen, and how those first impression actually changes. I mean the conception of Darcy and Elizabeth. How it actually changes. in the course of time and how it actually changed for good all these things you have to mention in your answers so i hope i have covered uh, most of the important aspects of the novel uh, and thank you so much for listening and uh,
if you are this lecture series uh, have some kind of benefit uh, to you it is beneficial to you i am much of it thank you thank you so much